I was one of those kids that knew I was gonna be an artist when I was like seven, you know, but I just wasn't sure what. So you work with, you know, you draw and you paint because those are kind of the tools that you have or whatever. And I got into high school and I took a ceramics class and I, and you know, you, you're pretty good at drawing and painting and stuff like that. And I, a week into ceramics, I knew I was a better, better sculptor than I was at anything prior to that. And I knew that was my focus. I also knew that I didn't want to work in clay. I knew I wanted to sculpt and I had it in my head. I want to work with metal. Hello and welcome back to the Quest for Zest. I'm Clark Underwood and today I find myself out here in Elgin, Texas. I'm headed to meet Travis Seeger. He's a sculptor. He's making brilliant spheres out of metal and not only spheres, but trees. And I'm just so excited to see his work, see where he's working. But first I gotta get there, so I'll see you there. Travis, it's me, Clark. Hey, Clark. You give great directions. Thank you, sir. Let me straight to you. <laughs> I saw your big door open and I thought, is that a round sphere? That's my man. That's me. All right, cool. Well, this space is awesome. Hey, thank you. Yeah, it's a new shop, actually. We're, just, we're still sort of settling in. Okay. So it has new shop smell still and Things aren't where they ought to be, but we're here and we're working, and but that's how it they're works. Getting there, this yeah. seems like it's where it where it ought to be. Yeah, that uh, we just wrapped that up the the other day. So awesome, cool. Yeah, well, tell me about your space. How you working here? Oh, all right. Well, we mainly acquired this space to build the tree series that I build with Foster Talge. Okay. And they are like life size kinetic tree sculptures made out of stainless steel and mild steel. Um, when this tree is finished, it'll be like 11 foot tall, 13 to 14 foot in diameter. And the thing we're finding in other studios is you almost have to finish the tree outside. Oh. So we have like a 16 by 16 door here, 12 by 12 in the back. We can fit our sky track back there, big gantry in here. This is what we call the tree shop. So you can go big. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So when this thing's built, it's going to feel real tree. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You'll walk under the canopy. You know, look up at the sky through all these chains. Yeah, you can climb it. I guess I'm not supposed to say that, but you can. <laughs> They're built to last. Built to last. Yes, yeah. Climb it if you dare. Yeah. I love it already, and I know that it's just in, in the begin in the beginning of the of the assembly. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said this is one of how many branches? Of eight, eight sub assemblies. Okay. And have you got those built? I do. Yeah, they're out back. Love. Let's see them. All I'm right. Let's do it. it. Follow me. Wow, even on an overcast day, the way these interact with light is fascinating. Oh gosh, thank you. I mean, it, it's funny, all things considered, these look pretty anemic, you know, compared to when, like when the sun comes out, they just light up. So these branches on top, is that a, uh, a template you have? Or how are you cutting these? Um, these are laser cut. You know, so I designed, we call this assembly the claw. The claw. And then each of the little pieces that come out and holds the chain, we call those hooks. Okay. And we used to build these individually. All right. Out of like eighth inch round and three sixteenths and quarter inch round stainless steel. So there's 16 hooks on a claw and each formerly, each hook took seven manufacturing processes to get into the right shape. Wow. And then we had 16 of them to, to like separately weld on to each claw mm -hmm. and 176 of those or so for a tree. Sounds like the labor stacks up pretty quick. Oh my God, we would just spend, you know, get comfortable and just spend a few weeks welding these up. Even as someone who doesn't know this craft in and out, I can absolutely see the amount of effort and workmanship and, and design that it takes to make it happen. And it is truly impressive. I can't wait to see it oh. up. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing when it really comes together. It's funny, this, because of the way these are made and there's so, I mean, there's so many moving parts, so many parts, after all this work, the tree comes together really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, in a week or two, we'll have all of these up and all the all the limbs molded and made to place these where we need them to be on that big gantry. And that's the best bit, frankly. It's getting that last piece up and looking at it and stepping back with this chin scratch, <laughs> you know? Seeing it come to life. The final finesse, is that, yeah. the, that the, the good part? Yeah. That's awesome. I would like to have two of these, you know, on either side of my steps to my house. Wouldn't that look great? Because yeah. I am currently killing 
two of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cool to see all the pieces on their own. I saw your sphere inside. Yeah. You want to talk me through that a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So how do you craft a big round ball of metal? <laughs> this thing looks so mysterious. Yeah, thank you. Here's my question about this. Yeah. What led you to think, hmm, I know how to weld. Let's make a sphere. It was the first thing that I, I did. It was really kind of the first thing that I welded when I learned to weld. Okay. You know, I was, um, you know, it was, it was the year I was out of high school. Um, I was one of those kids that knew I was going to be an artist when I was like seven, you know, but I just wasn't sure what. So you work with, you know, you draw and you paint because those are kind of the tools that you have or whatever. Right. And I got into high school and I took a ceramics class and I, and you know, you, you're pretty good at drawing and painting and stuff like that. And I, a week into ceramics, I knew I was a better, better sculptor than I was at anything prior to that. And I knew that was my focus. I also knew that I didn't want to work in clay. Huh? I knew I wanted to sculpt and I had it in my head. I want to work with metal. You know, you can attach metals, you know, metal in a way that it looks like it's defying gravity. The littlest weld, the smallest like weld will, will hold up so much. You can do things that you can't do in other like substrates. Right. So I, um, Apprenticed to a welding shop over the summer, so I was 18, and immediately went out and got my own like commercial shop and started acquiring tools, started welding. Long story, still long, is that the first thing I wanted to do was see if I could build like a really accurate sphere out of steel. Mm -hmm. And that's still my aesthetic. I just had an idea that, that, that I, I wanted that the contrast between something that was a geometric shape, but built in the most chaotic way you can. Yeah, because all of these pieces are straight, hard edges, right angled, yep. short, stubby, sharp, and then you put them into this nice, perfect, smooth sphere. It does feel very, it has a big contrast to it that's not on first glance. You think, ah, oh, it's a nice sphere, and then you get closer, you think, that is wild. It's exactly, it is exactly what turned me on about this. It's all, that was like my artist statement, mission statement. You said it right there. When people see your art or it's put into a space, like what's your, what's your hope for what people see in it or experience or how it changes a space? If, you, if I can stop you in your day and get yourself out of your head and you can sort of wonder about, just wonder about the world for a moment, caught up mm -hmm. in, you know, in a piece of art, and you know, my job's done. Yeah. So it sounds like you put this in a space, you put this in front of a person, you want it to draw attention. Yeah. Draw a pause. Yeah. Well, it does. You, you, are, you are not nailing it, but you are welding it. I have nailed them. It doesn't work at all. As a welder, I did. Did it? Did you go straight into sculpture and you've stayed there, or did you use those skills for you know as the trade traditionally? Uh, is or is it just been art? I've never built a fence. Amazing. Thank goodness. Oh, a gate. I have built a gate. I was young. But no, I knew that it was going to be about sculpture. I guess I was eight. I was 18 and I walked into a Western Welding Works in Sacramento, California and just said, you know, I want to be a sculptor. You know, I'm an artist. I want to be a sculptor. I want to work in metal. I'll work here for free every day just if you can teach me how to weld. And I'll never forget the guy said, I'll see you tomorrow. We start at 8 a.m. You're gonna need steel toe boots and only wear cotton. Anything with polyester and it's gonna turn you into a match. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'll never forget him saying that. Well, in hearing you say that you made the first one of these yeah. when you were 19, 20, does an artist need all of that time just building, playing, experimenting to like find a, a, this type of step to where it's like, I know exactly what I'm making and how I want it made and how it's received like that good cadence? Or do you feel like you're still in that development always? I think you're always developing like that. And I don't think that there's a set amount of time that you need to, you know, be exploring that process to find like where your niche is. For some people, it just happens immediately. Mm -hmm. And I think with like songwriters, they write their best song. They're like, yeah, no, it was weird. I wrote it in like six minutes. So sometimes that happens. And sometimes you do incredible work when you're young because you don't, I think, because you don't know what you can't do. You're breaking rules because you don't know them. Yeah, that's the best. I don't think you need all that time, but you do have to work. 
you have to just be working. As long as you're still moving and you're making mistakes and you're working, you will never run out of ideas. So. Yeah. Well, that's a question that, that always interests me is to the person who is, you know, in high school or, or just in a change of life and they're thinking like, hey, I like sculpture. I want to I want to pursue that. Where would you jump in if you were doing it again to just kind of like get get moving, get your hands making something? It's so much easier than you think. There's sort of a mystique around it. Everyone thinks that they can go out and buy a table saw and become a woodworker. They're like, yeah, they sell it at Home Depot. Like, go, you know, big box store, go get a table saw. Like, I can start, I'll watch YouTube or whatever. But, and I think it's changing, but when it came to welding, people are like, well, hold on, I'm not a metallurgist. Is that a word? You know, or whatever. Or like, I mean, I don't. It got it so much easier. It is so much easier than you think. You, if you're practicing, you could be like 80% of the welder that you would ever need to be to build whatever you want. Just hearing someone that's like, I've made a living off welding and kind of taught myself and just, you're still encouraging other people to come in and try it. That's really cool. But there are sculptures aside from, you know, these two series that I'm just kind of waiting, you know, waiting to find a little slice of time that I can. I have had a side gig in the past and for years, I was a DJ for, years. That was like my artist job thing. I had a lot of fun doing that. I shut down that business about four years ago and I, I painted myself into a corner where I had to pay for everything. I had to pay my mortgage with sculpture. It was, it was scary. It, nothing went horribly wrong. I was creating so much work and that works out there and I'm over that hump. And now I get to focus on, you know, where I want to go with the series, but work's going to keep coming. Aside from demand from customers and mm -hmm. uh, financial responsibility. Yeah. What is it that keeps you making and keeps you welding and keeps you sculpting? Oh, the short answer to that is I'm happy to be building anything. It's just what I'm supposed to do. Well, it seems like you've put yourself in the perfect environment yeah, to yeah, just yeah. be building. And it has been so cool to get an up close look at these trees and how they come together and your spheres and how chaotic but serene they are all at the same time and i'm gonna write that down if yeah. you don't mind chaotic and serene. serene yeah but i super appreciate you letting us in your shop thank showing you so us much. around talking us through how you got here it's all really inspiring oh thank you thanks for like thanks for showing up <laughs> and caring and asking questions yeah, you gave great directions i just pulled right in here it was no problem so <laughs> right. well great meeting you glad to be here clark thank you so much yeah thank you well, it's no surprise. I had a great time in this shop with Travis, seeing the work he's doing, getting to experience the, this is my outro. Hey, Clark. Yes. Can we have a gratuitous grinding montage? Roll that gratuitous grinding montage. And on that note, I'm Clark Underwood, and thank you for joining me again on the quest for zest.